after a media briefing. While the coronavirus has had adverse effects on travel and uh, the financial market, it has also had effect on the energy sector and the effect on the oil market has been significant. For more on this, I'm now joined in studio by Executive Chairman of uh, the Africa Energy Chamber, NJ Ayuk. It's good to have you with us. Thank you, to, thank you for having me. So it's a very unique situation of uh, supply and demand. At this particular point, there is less demand because of the coronavirus. So people are not traveling as yeah. much. Uh, there, there is less demand for oil. However, there is uh, oversupply of, of oil, and this is deliberate because of Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I think I'll start with a, dis with a disclaimer. I do not have the power to increase or decrease the oil prices. <laughs> so let's put that disclaimer out there. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> and uh, I think it, it, there, it is true what you do say. I think we right now have an oil price war. I was lucky to be at OPEC and being part of some of the technical discussions. And you really have right now, because of the coronavirus, there is a, um, a shortage in demand, which was basically driven by China. And right now, OPEC tried to see how they could create some kind of, some kind of stability in the oil market. But it, the discussions failed between Russia and Saudi Arabia. And right now, we are, we are in an oil price war. So there is a price war, and then there's coronavirus, and it's affecting the world economy, not just Africa, but everybody. So let's talk about that meeting in Vienna. Why did Russia walk out? It, it, you know, you go into these meetings always trying to say, we want to get a deal. And the Russians basically said, let's let the market to stabilize itself. And I think there are all kind of theories out there saying it's because of America, it's because of this. And I think it's really important when we in Africa, we have to walk away from the conspiracies. There's always been a cut in the, in the oil production, and there was somewhere between 1.5 million to 1.7 million barrels a day taken off the market. With coronavirus, you had basically 3.2 million barrels taken off the market. So to have another cut again, it might, the, the Russians felt like it might not really stabilize the market as it is. So okay. let us let the market stabilize itself. Let's focus on driving market policies there. But Saudi Arabia saw it as more of like, no, we have a crisis. Let's stabilize it. Let's go into more deeper cuts and then see what happens in the future. African states that were there, they really had not, a big, um, not much of a big say because our, our production is not as high as that of Russia or Saudi Arabia to really go into deep cuts. So I think as much as people want to blame Russia yeah. or they want to blame um, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, I think all, all producing countries have a stake at it. We, 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 all, we all share a common blame yeah. for not making this to work. So you're not buying into the conspiracy that says Russia has a huge sovereign wealth fund, which they have built up over uh, the years. And therefore, they want to take the war to America, actually. They want to be dealing with the shale oil once and for all so that they can bring America in line <laughs> in terms of sanctions. And really, Russia is that big in terms of this sovereign wealth fund that they, 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 can, they can take a drop in, in, in oil prices. It, it won't affect them at all. Everybody can take a bid in oil prices. It will affect them. Whenever you're losing money, you're not happy. So it does affect your bottom line. Right. But here, here, here's what you have to look at. Russia, there is some sense to that in the economics. For shale gas to be profitable, they, they are, they, you, you have to get between $50 to $55 for it to, make, for it to make any kind of profit. For Russian oil and gas to be profitable, they need $20, $20, $20 $25. Yeah. For Saudi Arabia, you need 5 to $7. Oh. So, so you go figure. Who is going? Who is going? To, uh, oh, 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 but all the other uh, oil-producing countries, like South Africa, we we can't afford uh, uh, twenty-five U.S. dollar uh, barrel price. South Africa doesn't produce. South Africa imports. Yeah. So when you're importing, right now you might say it's good for you, but then you you still have a lot of problems because the market is volatile. What the South, a South African consumer or an African consumer, like consuming states, 
you don't need, you, you, you don't, you don't need um, volatility in the market. What you need, you need more stability yeah. because you want to know what you have in it and you want more certainty because uncertainty is the worst thing that can happen to any market, not just when it comes to oil and gas because you're having a problems with jobs, you're having a problems with um, airlines flying, you're having a problem with manufacturing. The, th the issue is that people think this is about traders. It's not necessarily about traders. It's about our factories. If we are not having products, if we are not having supply, our factories can't work. And when our factories can't work, mom and dad can't have a job, and that's going to affect the, um, what, um, what you have to do, whether it's paying school fees or buying food at home. So we are all interconnected in this, and we get affected. So it looks like Saudi Arabia threw the first punch, and they were hoping that Russia would give in in, in 30 days. Russia has not given in uh, in uh, uh, 30 days. Who will withstand in this war? I, I, I don't think we should look at it as um, a game of winners and losers because we are all going to be losers at the end of the day, especially from an African perspective. We have to look at more on an, on a, on an issue of how do we get back to the table? Because I think whenever, it's, whenever you look at somebody saying Saudi is going to win or Russia is going to win, you know, we come from an African tradition where we've always had non-alignment. Yeah. You know, I don't care who is fighting in Russia, who is fighting in Saudi Arabia, like, bring me the money. I'm a capitalist. I like to make money. Right. So if you bring me the money and it is rubles or dollars or anything, I accept it. And I think most Africans are like that. At the end of the day, we have to look at our continent and look at how this is affecting us. Don't forget that at the end of the day, you have 650 million Africans without any kind of, any kind of power. Yeah. So you're talking about having a supply glut or having some kind of shortage in demand? Because China has one billion plus people and they use that to power their country and drive right. their industry. 15 percent of the We have market. 650 million people around the continent. Right here we have load shedding. If we could have those, that kind of resources and create an infrastructure, then we become a, a, pow a, powerful, and a, a powerful continent to really drive up demand. And so that when you have things like coronavirus, it doesn't really affect the, of the everyday African because we're really using our resources to power Africa, drive growth, drive industries and everything. Because at the end, you can't run industries with generators. You have to use, we have to use these resources to drive up, but we have to also increase our environment to make sure that it does work well. So whether it is Russia or Saudi Arabia, we want some kind of end to this. So I'm predicting that before the June OPEC meetings, you are going to see some kind of resolution to this. The United States government is already taking some deep steps at saying, let's find a way to stabilize right. the market. That, is, that should be the actual big news today. Because the Americans have always been those who have attacked OPEC. And right now, the Americans are saying, please find a way to stabilize the market because butter is also hurting their bottom line. It is hurting their bottom line. It's hurting jobs across the Gulf states right. like Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma. They are going to be taking a hit. And we have to find stability because it works well for everybody. And Jay, let's leave you there. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Jay Ayuki is the executive chairman of the African Energy Chamber, the Judiciary.